Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Kelvin here. So whenever you hear about Tesla stock, you will usually get two camps of people. On one side, you have super bullish people like Art Invest who says that Tesla can reach a god like $4,600 in 4 years time. And on the other hand, you have very bearish people like Gordon Johnson who has a price target of $67 which is a bit low. But it's totally possible yeah? Now even though a big part of my portfolio is in Tesla, I'm not married to the stock. If Tesla becomes a bad company tomorrow, I will immediately sell it. And since Deacon Genius is no longer around to tell me to hold the Tesla, I figured that I need to do it myself. So in this video, let's take a step back and we look at Tesla to find out whether it's still a good stock to invest in or should we just sell it away. But as usual, I would greatly appreciate it if you can help to tap the like button. In return, I will show you a turtle blowing bubbles underwater. Alright, let's start right now. The first criticism about Tesla is that it's overvalued. Tesla boosts be like, what do you mean? Stonks? Just kidding, I will admit that if you look at its PE ratio, it's way overvalued. Tesla's PE ratio is 120 now. Compare it to other automakers like Volkswagen 5, General Motors 5.8 or Toyota 10. Yes, you are paying 12 times more to buy Tesla compared to Toyota. But here's the thing. When people are buying Tesla, they are not expecting a 3 to 4% dividend. Instead, they are expecting the moon, aka high growth. So let's compare the growth rate of Tesla to other companies. Here's a list of the fastest growing companies in 2021. Tesla is at the top, followed by Salesforce and Adobe. Tesla's growth rate is around 60%, Salesforce 21%, Adobe 13%. As for PE ratio, Tesla is at 120. Salesforce 117, Adobe 40. What this means is that for Salesforce, you are paying 117 times the earnings for a 21% growth rate, while for Tesla, you are paying almost the same for 3 times the growth. So Tesla seems to be more worth it here. And for Adobe, yes, Tesla is 3 times more expensive than Adobe, but in return, you are getting almost 5 times the growth. So as you can see, when you look at Tesla, not from the perspective of P ratio, but rather, from the perspective of growth, you can start to see why Tesla is not so overvalued after all. Next, right now, many companies are facing supply chain issues caused by the pandemic and most recently, Russia-Ukraine war. For example, the global chip shortage is affecting Apple. Ford is having delays in deliveries from 37 different supplies. Toyota had to cut production plans because of chips shortage. What about Tesla? If Tesla were to produce lesser cars and their revenue drops, you can be sure that the stock will crash so much until even its mother also cannot recognize her. Okay, yes, Tesla is facing chip shortage, but not only it didn't affect their production, instead, Tesla increased their delivery numbers. How? Vertical integration. Since Tesla is making the cars themselves, they'd be like, no chips, no problem. So they remove a steering component from some cars and continue selling their cars. So simple. Another material is nickel, the stuff used to make batteries. Russia is exporting about 7% of the global nickel supply. Since the war started, the price of nickel had already gone up by 40%. But guess what? Tesla be like, meh, not affected. Because in 2021, they changed to using lithium iron phosphate batteries for the standard range cars, which are cheaper and more stable. So in summary, even though Tesla is facing supply shortage issues, they are not really affected by it. But do you know what else is not affected? Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes for all sorts of topics. They got tons of classes on personal finance, stock investing, and options trading. So as you guys know, I'm always trying to learn new stuff. And right now, I'm taking a class called Document Your Life, 4 Methods to Live More Intentionally by Nathaniel Drew. In this class, Nathaniel shares a concept called Intentional Documentation where you can capture pieces of your life in a meaningful way so that one day you can look back on them to see where you have come from and what you have been through. So because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1,000 people to use my link or my code Kelvin Learns Investing will get a 1 month free trial of Skillshare. In this 1 month, you can take dozens of these classes from creativity to entrepreneur to improving your life. Sure, you get to support this channel, but more importantly, you get to learn tons of new stuff from Skillshare. So with that being said, let's get back to the video. 
Okay, the next risk that Tesla may face is recession or interest rate hike. When stuff like eggs get more expensive, people will spend less money on something as expensive as a Tesla car. But here's something about Tesla. First, Tesla is an electric vehicle. So when oil gets expensive, people will actually be incentivized to switch over to electric vehicle to save money. And according to a survey, it was found that many people who buy Tesla have slightly higher income. Meaning, the people who buy Tesla actually have money to spend. When times are bad, it mainly affects people who have lower income. And people who have money aren't really affected, like we have seen time and time again in the past, aka the rich gets richer. We can see this by looking at how long you will need to wait to get a Tesla car. Right now, even when there's fears of recession or interest rate hike, the waiting time is still very long. For the Tesla Model S, at the fastest, you can only get it in 3 months time. Or the Tesla Model X, at the fastest, you can get it 8 months time, during Christmas. So Tesla doesn't have a demand problem because the demand is very high. But rather, Tesla is not producing the cars fast enough to meet the demand. Also, do you know what happens when there's high demand? Higher price. Recently, Tesla has raised the price of their cars by as much as 10%. And still, Tesla buyers be like, shut up and take my money. So in short, recession and interest rate hike doesn't have much effect on Tesla. Next risk, competition. We have seen what happens when there's competition. Nokia, win big big. iPhone came, Nokia, lose big big. Netflix, win big big. Disney, HBO, Hulu came, Netflix, lose big big. Even though Tesla is the best selling car right now, but it doesn't guarantee that they will continue winning. The moment people find a better brand, Tesla will easily lose to competition. In 2020, there are already 370 electric car models. And by 2030, you can be super duper sure that there will be way more EVs around. So what is Tesla's mode? First, efficiency. Since Tesla is making their cars themselves, they can make things super duper efficient. You can look at this at several ways. In terms of production speed, they are making one car every 44 seconds. Basically, by the time you go to toilet and came back, Tesla has produced 10 cars. In terms of logistics, they have a few giga factories spread across the world that can reduce shipping costs. So let's say if you bought your Tesla from Singapore, your car will be made in China. In terms of financials, Tesla is spending money very efficiently. Currently, Ford gross margin is 16%, GM 14%, Toyota 20%, for Tesla, it's around 45%. Second mode, fast charging infrastructure. One of the main concerns when buying an EV is how fast can you charge your car. For example, if you pump petrol, you only need like 20 seconds to pump and another 10 seconds to push the car. For EV, if you're using a normal charger, you can easily take a few hours to get a full charge. Ain't nobody got time for that. But with Tesla's supercharger, you only need to charge for less than one hour to get a full charge. If you look at US, there are superchargers, superchargers everywhere. And this gives Tesla a big mode compared to its competitors. But of course, Tesla is not just an EV company, they are also a data company. And with it comes the third mode, full self-driving. It was estimated that Tesla has already collected 5 billion miles of data while its competitors like Coma AI, Waymo, Cruise are just a few million. And with every new Tesla car sold, the amount of data that it can collect continues to go up. This mode is super huge because it just means that among all the other car companies, Tesla will likely be the first company to solve full self-driving, which has a very high profit margin. So with all these modes, Tesla will remain competitive for a while longer. The fifth risk for Tesla is full self-driving. Every year, Elon Musk has been promising to release full self-driving by the end of that year. This year, he said the same thing. So how long is FSD away from completion? I don't know. According to Ark Invest, they are giving a high probability that it will be launched in 2024 or 2025. Which by the way is how they get their $4,600 price target. Because they predict RoboTaxi will contribute to 34% of the revenue. But it's anyone's guess when it will come out. And even if it came out, the regulators be like, hold up. Right now, US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is investigating Tesla's autopilot, 
Out of 31 driver assisted crashes, Tesla is in 24 of them. The risk here is if FSD is blocked by them, other competitors may eventually catch up to Tesla. For example, Nvidia is partnering with NIO, or Waymo is partnering with Tesla's competitors. So for FSD, even though Tesla has collected the most data, other competitors may still be able to catch up. Final risk, slowing growth. Elon Musk has promised that Tesla will grow by more than 50% for several years. But you know I know, promise may not always come true. Like some of us promise our boyfriends or girlfriends that we'll be together forever, then immediately break up that next month. We have all seen what happened to Netflix when its growth slowed down. The stock dropped by over 70% in a few months. Right now, Tesla is at the start of the S-curve. And once it reaches the top, Tesla's growth will slow down. So I tried doing some research, and I saw something interesting by Dave Lee. There are multiple S-curves for Tesla. Right now, Tesla is having its EV S-curve. But after that, there are actually three more S-curve. Full self-driving robot taxi S-curve, energy S-curve, and the biggest one, AI robot S-curve. So in summary, unless Tesla mess up somewhere, I believe that the growth will not slow down anytime soon. Anyway, those are six of my concerns about Tesla. After going through them, I feel that Tesla is still a good stock to invest in. But what other risks that Tesla might have? Do comment down below and let me know. Like, share, and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.